Welcome back, everybody, and I suck at painting miniatures. I think I've said that before. I painted this foppish wizard a few months ago when I was in a bit of a dark period with painting where nothing seemed to work, and I was just going to toss them onto the crappy painted pile, but decided, you know what, this is a good opportunity for me to show you how you can fix a less than stellar paint job and also add to it to make it look more exciting. Everyone ready to paint a miniature twice? Well, let's get to it. The first thing we have to address is the robe or cloak, whatever we're going to call it. Uh, I actually painted this over the course of two nights, and if you notice, my highlighting and shading is wrong. I over-highlighted the red on the robes, and which threw everything out of balance, which makes the base coat way too dark. Uh, there's simply just too much contrast for the subtle folds that are on this robe. However, rather than going back to the beginning and redoing all the layers on the robes, all we have to do is actually shift things down a bit. So this mix of gory red and vermilion was originally my highlight color, one of my highlight colors. I'm going to bring that down into the base coat region instead. So the shade is going to remain in place. We're going to redo the base coat and redo the highlights. As I always say, the base coat is the most important thing on the model. Your highlights and shade are designed, they're supposed to uh, emphasize the base coat. So we always want to make sure you have your base coat established, and that's what I did not do here. So we're going to go back, make sure that base coat is good, then we can start reapplying the highlights. Now the good news is this is fairly easy to do because as you know, red is hard to paint, but we already have red in the miniature, so uh, we just need to adjust it a little bit. It only takes one or two coats to get back into our highlight range, and then we can simply move up from there. And this time, I'm not taking the highlights as far as I did previously. The highlights, especially in this case, because we have very soft folds on the robe, should be far more subtle especially since we are working with red. You do not want to over highlight in general, but especially you do not want to over highlight red. So that's one area of the model fixed. The other one I need to fix is the tunic. As you can see on camera, the tunic looks very rough. That's because I did not thin my paint enough when applying my highlights. The fix for this is similar to what we did on the robe, but actually easier. All I have to do is go back to my base coat color, which is magic blue, uh, thin that out, uh, fairly thin, basically create something between a layer and a glaze, and go back and reapply just the base coat region because that's the area with the most rough looking paint. So we just apply another layer here to help disguise all those rough brush strokes. So now I've fixed my mistakes on the miniature. Now we need to spice it up a little bit because he's looking fairly plain. The first thing we are going to do is to paint some stripes on his tunic. This is the easiest thing you can do whenever you want to spice up a plain paint job. In this case, I am using hexed lichen and going for fairly thin lines, almost like a pinstripe. And I have glaze medium added to the hex lichen to slow down the dry time because whenever you do uh, hand work like this, obviously there's a chance for screwing up the hex, or excuse me, the uh, glaze medium gives us a little bit extra dry time. So if we screw up, we can quickly wipe it away and try again. And then for highlights, just again, a very minimal amount, not a lot of folds on our tunic. So just a little bit of white for a small amount of highlights here and there. So if you ever have a boring paint job, you can do stripes on it. Not even like this, uh, vertical stripes. You can do just a horizontal stripe like along the end or edge of a cloak or something like that. Really spices up just a, a single line going around the bottom. The only thing to keep in mind is this best works on relatively flat surfaces. If you have a lot of sharp, uh, deep folds on a miniature, uh, the stripes are just going to confuse 
the uh, contrast more. So you usually want to reserve it for uh, flat areas like we have mostly on this miniature. Next thing we are tackling are the leggings and kind of going with the stripe theme, at least with those colors. Uh, decided the legs look a little bit too plain. I wanted to spice them up. I didn't want to do stripes again. So instead I decided just to do a two-tone effect on the legs. So the outside we'll leave our uh, orange color. On the inside we'll go with our purple and hexed lichen. Uh, all you have to do for something like this is basically all I did was draw a, a line, a stripe down the front and back of the leg, and then I just filled in the area in between the two. And then we highlight as normal. Again, no real folds. We don't need shade for this area. A uh, little bit more highlighting because we do have that knee that extends out. So we need to highlight that knee and uh, that's about it, just a little around the ankle. But again, you can see really spicing up the miniature here. We have two very bland plain areas and we very quickly made them much more interesting. Since we added purple twice on the miniature, you can see the colors are now shifting. I originally had that uh, yellow undershirt in him and now that we have a lot more purple I could bring that color out instead and the yellow looks far more out of place so again using the same colors painted the undershirt purple and notice I also did the cuffs of the shirt as well again it's taking a plain area adding a second color there basically making it two-toned and far more interesting and now for something just a little bit more complicated. I want to add some mystical swirly things to the back of his robe. Going with khaki and again glaze medium and just painting starting off with kind of a swirl mark and then we are going to add to that. A couple things to keep in mind if you're trying something like this. First of all, do not paint the smallest thing you possibly can because uh, then you're going to run into troubles as you try to do more and more of it. So my swirls here are fairly big and once it's completed the whole robe will be covered so the size is decent for what we're painting here. Once I establish the first little spiral thing I just add to that and then moving to other areas of the miniature just adding more simple spirals and occasionally adding a little fleur de lis on it and that is about it. Now, if you are trying a kind of curvy pattern like this, it actually may be simpler to hold the brush in one place and move the miniature because uh, the easiest way to screw this up is uh, moving the brush around because you change and distort the tip of the brush and you might be getting a fine line then when you change direction, all of a sudden you get a fatter line depending on the condition and size and quality of your brush. It's a little bit easier painting it when you're not having to hold it steady for a camera. And just to note, you can see a lot of errors in the swirls. I'm not good at painting like this, this freehand style of painting. Uh, so try to do better than me. It should be fairly easy of a challenge to do. We are going to finish up with two glazes. First, kind of a, a darkish reddish purple glaze. Uh, this is adding a little bit of color and to the shadows of the robe. Uh, also, this is going to add a little bit of color to our swirls. Reminder, we didn't do any highlighting or shading on the swirls. Uh, we just need to darken them a little bit in the shadows and that's good enough. And then to blend those swirls a little bit more into the robes, adding a gory red glaze over them. Uh, I don't want these swirls to stand out, that's why I didn't do them in pure white. I did them in a little bit of a off-white color or khaki. Um, so they look more a part of it rather than being painted onto the miniature. And there we go. We've taken a crappy paint job and made it look slightly less crappy. Not everything I do comes out great and I'm willing to show you my mistakes. So. Hopefully you can relate and understand that not everything is going to work out perfect every single time you paint a miniature. I screw up quite often 
and you may screw up as well. Uh, the main point is trying to get better and then sometimes you can take uh, a miniature you're not proud of and then add to it like this to make it look at least somewhat better. Also, the adding the details to this miniature is something you can do with a miniature that you painted long ago that now you're not happy with. Maybe it's not up to your current standard. Uh, take it off the shelf, add a few little designs to it, and refresh the miniature. It's all ready to go again. So that is it for this one. Again, if you are ever discouraged with your miniature painting, just keep on painting. Try a different miniature. Some will come out great, some will come out bad. Uh, but as long as you're learning and trying new things, that is the key to being a decent miniature painter. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. See you next time. Bye-bye. You know, guys, the whole situation, being stuck up here in space, mm -hmm. forced to watch cheesy movies, mm -hmm. interacting with other life forms, it kind of bites. You're starting to catch on, Kimasabi.